Hi, right, this is Steven. I'm going to show you how to convert your DVDs to play on your iPod, your 360, your PS3, or your Apple TV. We'll be using DVD Decryptor and Handbrake to create M4V video files. From the website shown, we'll download DVD Decryptor. At the top of the page, you'll see the DVD Decryptor setup exe file. Download and install the program. Once DVD Decryptor is installed, we'll be using it to copy the contents of a DVD disc to the computer hard drive. Once DVD Decryptor is open, go ahead and insert your DVD into your computer. Now we'll go to the Mode menu option, go down to ISO, and Read. And then we'll need to change the destination of where we're going to save the DVD ISO file. First time that you use DVD Decryptor, the program will want to save the file to the C drive. But if you're using Windows Vista or 7, you will receive an error if you do so. We'll go ahead and we'll change the destination to a folder located on the C drive. We'll go over to the side, choose Computer, open up our C drive, and create a new folder. And in this example, we'll use the folder Movies. Select that folder and then choose Save. And now you'll see that the destination for the ISO has changed. Next, you can go ahead and choose the button that will decrypt the DVD. Depending on the speed of your DVD drive, this step may take like 20 minutes. Once complete, you can go ahead and quit DVD Decryptor. If you're using Windows Vista or 7, you will receive an error message. Just click OK. Now we'll download Handbrake from the website shown. Once at the site, on the left-hand side, you'll see the download link. Choose that and go down and choose the Windows version. Download and install the program. Once installed, we'll open up Handbrake. Near the top, you'll see where it says Source. Select Source and choose Video File. Now we'll navigate to the folder that we created on the C drive. So we'll go over to the side, choose Computer, open up the C drive, and select the Movies folder. In there, we'll choose the ISO of the movie that we want to use. Once Handbrake opens up the ISO file, you'll see near the top where it says Title. Right here is where we'll choose the video that we want to encode. Automatically, Handbrake selects the longest one. This will usually be your movie file. Right below the title is the destination. This is where the M4V video file will be saved to. We'll go over and we'll select Browse, and we'll save this to a folder on our desktop. So select the desktop and choose New Folder, and we'll call this folder Handbrake. Select that folder, and now change the file name to whatever you choose, and select Save. Now on the right hand side you'll see the presets for the settings. If you are creating videos only for use on the iPhone or iPod Touch, you can select those presets which will create a smaller video in terms of file size. But for this video, I'll show you how to create videos for use in all my devices, such as the iPhone, the 360, the PS3, and the Apple TV. I always select the Universal Settings preset. If your video's aspect ratio is not 16 by 9, but 240 to 1, like in this example, Handbrake will crop off the black bars, as you can see under the cropping section on the picture tab. In order for the video to work on the iPhone and iPod Touch, the cropping numbers all need to be set to zero in order to maintain the correct aspect ratio that the iPhone iPod Touch accepts. So we will select Custom under the cropping section and change all values to zero. Under the Video Filters tab are settings you can change if your video is a cartoon or a television show to make the video appear smoother and with fewer lines. If you are creating a video of cartoons, change the Detelescene setting to default. Since cartoons are drawn using about 24 frames per second and television display around 30 frames per second, duplicate frames are added to the cartoon to make up the extra frames per second. This setting removes those extra frames and will remove the lines created during movement of the cartoon, hence making the video much clearer to view. If you are creating a video of an older television show, you can change the deinterlacing to slow or slower, which will help the video to appear smoother and clearer to view. Under the video tab is where we'll set the file size for the video. I always choose my file size based on the length of the video. I always figure one minute of video equals 10 megabytes. So a 60 minute video would be 600 megabytes, a 90 minute video would be 900 megabytes, 
and a two hour movie would be 1200 megabytes. If you are only going to be using this video for use on the iPhone or iPod Touch, you can use a smaller file size, but if you plan on watching this video on a television, the larger file size will make this video appear a lot less pixelated and clearer. Next, the audio tab will allow you to choose a different audio track to go along with your video. I always allow Handbrake to choose the best audio track for my video. That way, I'm not accidentally grabbing a commentary track. The Subtitles tab will allow you to add subtitles to your video, but since we are creating M4V video files, the subtitles will be burnt into the video and cannot be turned off, so I never select subtitles for any of my videos. And finally, the Chapters tab will allow you to rename the chapter markers if you choose to do so. I never changed my chapter markers, so all my chapter markers are displayed with the default names, Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, etc. The Advanced tab has no options that are really useful to us, since we are not advanced power users of Handbrake. Before we take the time to encode the entire movie, let's take a look at a 15 second preview of our work to make sure our settings are optimized for the best video possible. I always start my preview somewhere around the middle of the options given to me, number 4 in this case, and change my duration to at least 15 seconds. I'll choose to play in QuickTime, which will pop open a command prompt and encode a 15 second preview for me. Once encoded, the preview should open for viewing. If Handbrake gives you an error when opening the preview, the preview video will be located in your destination folder with the word sample in the video file name and you can open it manually with your QuickTime player or even Windows Media Player. Once we have checked out our preview and are happy with the settings we chose, we can select Add to Queue. If you wish to create a list of videos to encode one after another, you can repeat all the steps we've taken so far in Handbrake and add items to the queue. Because of the amount of time needed to encode each video, I usually create a list of several movies to encode and let my computer run during the overnight. Since I'm using a computer with a dual core processor, encoding a 30 minute TV show takes about 30 minutes and a 90 minute movie takes a little over 90 minutes to encode. Once your queue is filled, you can select the encode button and sit back and let Handbrake do its job. Once complete, you can import the video into iTunes or save the video onto a thumb drive for use on your 360 or PlayStation 3. So that is it. Those are the steps necessary to convert your DVDs into video files that will play on your iPhone, iPod Touch, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Apple TV. At first, Handbrake may take a few tries to get your steps perfected for your devices, but with a little time and practice, these steps become pretty simple. One extra tip, if you receive an error message when ripping your DVDs using DVD Decryptor, you can use a trial version of any DVD to break the copy protection found on some DVD discs. At the website shown, download and install any DVD. When you run any DVD, you'll see that the program will find and remove the copy protection of many DVDs. Then you can restart DVD Decryptor and try to rip your DVDs again. Just note, this may not always work and some copy protection may be unbreakable at this time. I found that my any DVD trial software did expire after the trial period, but I've been able to change my computer's date to the approximate date of when I installed any DVD. And then the program will work for me since the software thinks I'm still within my trial period. To adjust the date and time on your computer, go down to the bottom right hand corner to where the date is, click on it, select adjust date time, and change the date accordingly. So that's the end of this video. Feel free to ask any questions you may have, but remember trial and error is necessary with Handbrake. If something doesn't work out for you, try different settings. Thanks for watching.